Hello and welcome to StarCraft Pulse, a weekly show dedicated to keeping everyone who's not too fond of soccer entertained. We have quite a bit of interesting news and information for you this week, so let's get started. One of the more noteworthy pieces of news is the release of the new StarCraft 2 commercial. It's a great looking cinematic video and you can see it over at the official StarCraft 2 YouTube channel. There have been whispers on the net that Blizzard may be planning a StarCraft 2 tournament edition of the game. This version of the game will apparently include a LAN mode and be tailored for organizers and hosters of tournaments. Don't get too excited though. It's been said that the Battle.net accounts and passwords for this version of the game need to come directly from Blizzard. Furthermore, it seems necessary that employees of Blizzard are present at the tournaments using this version of the game. It's interesting news nonetheless. There also seems to be something interesting happening over at the official StarCraft 2 Facebook page. They have yet to announce exactly what it is, but you can head over there and investigate for yourself. For those of you having withdrawal symptoms because of the lack of StarCraft 2, there have been whispers about replay managers that allow you to view any version of the game's replays. There also may or may not be links to that below. But just to be clear, you didn't hear that here. There hasn't been much going on in the local scene over the past week. With the Soccer World Cup currently in South Africa, most of the players are probably just keeping busy with that. However, for those of you who want to stay busy with something StarCraft related, we'll be hosting a StarCraft Brood War 1v1 tournament on Sunday, the 20th of June. This tournament is just for fun and shouldn't be taken too seriously. For all those StarCraft 2 players out there that have yet to play StarCraft 1, you may well learn something from playing the game that started it all. Read more about Fist's Wake and sign up over at mitton.co.za. Now, onto the strategy segment of the show. This week we'll be covering another Protoss counter, the counter to the very same strat we learned in the last episode, the all-in marine SCV rush, dubbed the Magnu push here in South Africa. Today's game is between Chase and Magnu on Kulas Ravine, they are Protoss and Terran respectively. Okay, so we have Chase spawning at the bottom left as the green Protoss and Magnu at the top right as the purple Terran. In today's replay we will mostly be watching Chase and what he is doing as he is going to be performing the strategy we are going to learn. This is not by any means an all-in strategy, this is a counter to one. You will be trying to set up a good economy from the start of the game and at the same time trying to counter the all-in marine SCV push. The start of the game will be pretty standard, with a few small exceptions. As you can see, Chase is sending his second probe that he produced to scout. He suspects McNoob will do something like this, so he just wants to confirm his suspicions. It's always good to be prepared, and it's always good to know what your opponent is doing. So on about 9 supply, or with your third probe, you'll want to put your first pylon down. After that, make sure you save some minerals for your first gateway. You'll be putting that down on 10 supply once your pylon is complete. It's a good idea to save your chrono boost for when you can actually produce a few probes at a time, so don't use them while you're saving. Once you've got 150 minerals, put your first gateway down. Now that you have a bit more supply, you can start using your chrono boosts. Use your first one now to get those probes out a bit faster. The timing on this strategy can be pretty tricky, but with a bit of practice it'll become a lot easier. As you can see, Chase has found McNoob's base. From Chase's viewpoint, it would be too early to tell exactly what McNoob is doing, but as I said, it's better to be prepared. Now when you get to about 14 supply, or just before your gateway is complete, put on your first assimilator, you're gonna need that gas soon. Right after that, get your cybernetics core down, don't even bother getting that standard first zealot. For now, keep chrono boosting your probes out, but remember to save at least one or two boosts worth of energy. As soon as your assimilator goes down, get three probes on it, we want to maximize the gas income. The probe you use to scout can either be brought back to your base, or you can leave it at one of the Zalnaga towers for that extra bit of sight. When you're on about 17 supply, or just before your cybernetics core goes down, get your second pylon and second assimilator. As soon as that second pylon goes down and gives you that extra supply, start producing your first stalker. You should have enough gas for it now. Use some of that saved up energy to chrono boost it out. You want it out as soon as possible as this stalker has a very important role to play. 
As we did with the first assimilator, get three probes on the second one when it's complete as well. Either set the waypoint or be ready to move your first stalker across the map to your enemy's base. It's time to harass a bit. Remember to keep chrono boosting out all the stalkers you can from now on. As always, it's good to try squeezing a few probes as well, as long as they don't hinder the stalker production. Get your third pile on now and remember to watch your supply count at all times. It's never good to be supply blocked when you really need those units out fast. When your first stalker reaches your opponent's base, attack the supply depot blocking his choke. If you can kill it without him responding, that's great, but the whole point here is to force him to show you what he's producing. As you can see, McNoob takes a moment, but he does eventually drop the depot and send out those marines, confirming Chase's suspicions about his strat choice. When you're on about 30 supply or have two or three stalkers out, get your second gateway down. You don't want your stalkers to die here, so just move them back and forth when the marines come out. Take a few shots if you can get them in without taking too much damage. Now if you at all know the strat you're countering, which you should if you're watching this tutorial, you'd know that it was about time for the Terran player to push. When he moves out, use that great movement speed and range of the stalkers to pick at his army. Remember, he has no way of healing those marines. Every bit of damage counts, but as I said before, try not to lose stalkers. If you're playing a map like Kulas Ravine with all those twists and turns, it's great to try kite him away from your base while you get more stalkers out. When your second gateway and fourth pylon go down, just boost even more stalkers out. It's essential that you keep them coming. By now you should have done some considerable damage to your opponent's forces. He will have no way of replenishing them as all his SCVs are headed to your base. If you lose a stalker or two, it's not the end of the world, as long as you do enough damage to them before they die. Your opponent will have to go for your base eventually, he can't chase you around the map forever. While harassing his forces, remember to reset your waypoints, you don't want your units walking into his approaching army alone. When, or if, he reaches your base, try to micro your units, using your buildings and other obstacles on the map to your advantage. As you can see, Chase was clever with his pylon construction, so losing that one won't do much to hinder him. If your opponent attacks your buildings, take advantage. Kill what little he must have left while he's occupied. It's always clever to be ready with your probes. Remember they can do damage too if need be. Now as you can see here, things are not going too well for McNoob and his all-in strat. He's lost most of his units and he has no way to get more. Chase, on the other hand, has most of his probes still alive and he's sitting on four stalkers, with more coming fast. As we see the GG's being exchanged, you can see how effective this counter can be. You just have to get all the intricacies right and practice, practice, practice. Even if you weren't sure if your opponent was doing this all-in strategy, you would still be ready for anything and ready to tech switch to get different units with that strong economy you built up. That's it for this week. Check back next week for more. One thing there's been absolutely no lack of this week is World of Warcraft news. Blizzard has provided a number of fan sites with Cataclysm, Talent and Skill previews for many of the game's current classes. While the Talent trees and skills are not done and dusted just yet, it's still great to see what's in store for your class. Head on over to World of Raids or MMO Champion for more on that. The non-disclosure agreement for a recent Blizzard press event ended yesterday and a load of new Cataclysm information has hit the net. Here are some quick highlights from the press event. The Path of Titans has been scrapped and will no longer be implemented. Inscription will be receiving an overall. Glyphs will now come in three tiers rather than two. Guild leveling will happen, but it will not be coming with guild talents or currency. There are new plans for archaeology and it will be comparable to cooking at end game. The Bastion of Twilight will be Cataclysm's entry level raid with Cho Gull as the end boss. And much much more. Head on over to any of these sites to read more about it or check the links below. World of Raids recently had an interview with Tom Chilton and he dished out even more interesting details on Cataclysm. It may provide some clarification to all the announcements that happened at the press event. The 2010 Warcraft Invitational has been announced. Warcraft 3 and World of Warcraft players that do well here earn the rights to compete at BlizzCon later this year for greater glory. See more about that at the official Blizzard website or in the links below. One last thing that's probably worth mentioning is that Blizzard has warned players that a recent release of Adobe Flash contains a critical vulnerability that could be used to install a keylogger on your computer. You can avoid any problems by installing the latest version of Adobe Flash from the Adobe website. Sadly, that's it for this week's show. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to comment. Like it, favorite it, share it, and check back here next week for more.